let's do so. Um, now welcome members to the <coughs> fifth meeting in 2013 of the Subordinate Legislation Committee. As always, ask members to turn off mobile phones. Agenda item one is draft to instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. We start with the Public Services Reform Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life in Scotland, etc. Order 2013, draft SG 2013-4. This instrument is a draft of an instrument which the Scottish Ministers proposed to bring under, sorry, to make under the Public Services Reform Act 2010. It is required to be laid before the Parliament for the purposes of consultation by Section 26.1 of that Act. The consultation period must run for at least 60 days and the Scottish Ministers must take into account representations received during that period before laying the order. The order itself, once laid, is subject to the affirmative procedure and the Committee will scrutinise this draft laid under that procedure in the normal way. The legal advisers have raised two minor drafting errors. Firstly, paragraph 3 of Schedule 2 to the order amend section 9 of the Ethical Standards in Public Life, etc., Scotland Act 2000, by substituting Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life for Public Standards Commissioner for Scotland, when the correct title of the new Commissioner is the Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life in Scotland. Secondly, Schedule 1 to the order makes textual amendments to the Scottish Parliamentary Commissioners, sorry, Commissions and Commissioners, <laughs> etc., Act 2010, which are consequential on the transfer of functions by the order. Paragraph 20 modifies section 18 of the Act. In line with the other amendments to the Act, the word it, which appears at the end of section 18.1, should be changed to the Commissioner, but this change has been omitted. The Scottish Government may wish to consider addressing these errors when it brings forward a draft order for approval. Does the Committee agree to draw the attention of the Parliament to the instrument under the general reporting ground as it contains two minor drafting errors. Thank you. Agenda item two, instrument subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by the legal advisers on the Children's Hearings Scotland Act 2011, transfer of children to Scotland, effective orders made in England and Wales or Northern Ireland, regulations 2013 draft. Members may wish to note that an earlier version of this instrument was withdrawn as a result of an error identified by the committee. No points also have been raised on the Social Care and Social Work Improvement Scotland Requirements for Care Services Amendment Regulations 2013 draft. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Okay. Jim. Agenda item three, instruments subject to negative procedure. Housing Scotland Act 2001, Assistance to Registered Social Landlords and Other Persons, Grants Amendment Regulations 2013, SSI 2013 7. There appears to be a doubt whether the instrument is intra veris in respect that the statutory consultation requirements specified in Section 93.4 of the Housing Scotland Act 2001 do not appear to have been complied with. It does not appear the Scottish Ministers have consulted with such bodies representing local authorities as they think fit before making this instrument as Section 93.4 requires. Do members have any comments? And Salah? Thank you, Chair. Chair yeah, I would agree that the level of consultation is perhaps weak at best. Um, and I'm, I'm not actually sure that whether they need to consult, uh, concentrate only on the changes that we suggested. It may well be that they may have to visit, revisit the whole document itself mm -hmm. and therefore I, I would agree that uh, the consultation is not being carried out to its fullest and as I believe it's required to do so. Okay. I think it would be beneficial to the ministers as well. It will protect them ag against any challenge as well. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I, I think it is worth reporting. Um, I, I, I'm in not quite such a certain position as um, um, Zala Malik, um, but I think, I think certainly at the end of the day um, it will protect ministers <coughs> if they consider whether they should take action on this or not. Okay, John. Um, <clears throat> I agree with Stuart that I think it is uh, worth reporting. I would welcome the changes that um, have been brought forward as a result of the committee's um, observations and scrutiny of the previous um, 
<coughs> instrument or draft. Um, I think that um, it is vital uh, that it is properly consulted upon, um, and I appreciate there is some doubt, um, but it is by virtue of the fact that these changes that we suggested have been made that that section of the instrument has therefore not been consulted on, and therefore that certainly could <coughs> leave it open to challenge, mm -hmm. uh, as I understand it, that it might very well be into virus and were it to be found so, then the consequences of that in terms of the awarding of grants, etc., that this instrument would have allowed would make the, these uh, awards into virus and that opens a whole can of worms that I would have thought ministers would want to um, examine um, and, and go through the proper process so that that potential loophole and, and area of challenge could be eliminated at this stage. Yep, thank you. Okay, so does the committee agree to draw to the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground E, as there is a doubt as to whether it is actually intravirus? Thank you very much. We come to the Energy Performance of Buildings, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2013, like 2013-12. There has been a failure to lay the instrument at least 28 days before it comes into force, as required by Section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010. The Committee may wish to recognise that in policy terms, the coming into force of this instrument at the same time as the Energy Performance of Buildings England and Wales, etc., Amendment Regulations 2013, may have been considered necessary in order to ensure consistent application through Great Britain of the Green Deal. However, the Committee may find that Scottish Ministers have not adequately explained why they, in conjunction with the Secretary of State, were unable to agree a timetable for the making of both sets of regulations which properly respected the procedural rules on laying application in this Parliament and in the UK Parliament. It's for the Committee to decide whether the Scottish Minister's explanation as to why they were not in a position to make and lay this instrument at the same time as, or shortly after, the Energy Performance of Buildings, England and Wales, etc., Amendment Regulations is adequate, Additionally, the committee may wish to note that only two sitting days elapsed between the laying of this instrument and its coming into force. Do comments, do members have any comments, Stuart? Um, I think I'm satisfied with the explanations insofar as they describe why we are in this position. Um, however, I think um, I, the, while the explanations are sufficient, I think it does leave um, the issue of uh, coordination between the two administrations uh, as not meeting a satisfactory standard. Now, whether that is a reporting ground for us as a committee or not, I think is a, a slightly different thing. But hopefully what I've just said on the record um, does make clear that, uh, that, that uh, this is not uh, the way in which uh, we would hope things would happen. But then I think the response from the Scottish Government indicates that's their view as well. Yeah. Sure. Yes, I would support uh, Stuart Stevenson in that regard. Um, I think the important point here is that there have only been two sitting days available uh, in terms of the consultation time, and that is not adequate as to where to apportion blame as to the uncoordinated approach uh, I'm not sure that we're in a position to judge, but there has nonetheless been a failing here of process um, between apparently the two governments. And the upshot is that there has been an inadequate consultation period provided, which reflects on us as a parliament, mm -hmm. and therefore that's not to be welcomed. <coughs> yeah. I think there's a a case for seeking clarification on why ministers were not in a position to make and lay this instrument um, at the same time or shortly after the, the English instrument was laid. And I don't know that we've yet had sufficient explanation from ministers on that point. Uh, well, I sus my, my reading of what we have is simply that the, not adequately it, the last the one they got was, was not what they were expecting, so they had to change it. Um, we 
could, I'm sure, explore the detail of that. Yes, I mean, let, let, by all means, let's, let's do so. But I can't help noting the basic observation that if the Westminster government is sailing close to the wind to observe its 21-day rule, then we're, not, we're never going to achieve a 28-day rule for something that's supposed to come into force at the same time in Scotland. I think yeah. <clears throat> from my reading of the notes provided is that there's a, a claim that there has been a coordinated approach which self-evidently that coordination has broken down. Mm. And I think that's probably where the difficulty lies. And the upshot is that we have reduced the consultation period to two days, not 28. Right. Well, the sum of that, of course, is that uh, not only have they broken the rules on the 28 days, but there's been a total uh, lack of opportunity for the public in general, uh, or those affected by it. To, to know what about the law change. Um, uh, I think we can agree that we'll... we'll just, just for clarity, um, while there is a, 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 a difficulty <coughs> in that the legislation became effective in such a short period as to inhibit anyone um, preventing it coming into force, it being a negative instrument, there is nonetheless still a period during which it can be revoked. Now, that's not without difficulties, but, but, but I, just, I just think, you know, we should, in our discourse here, be proportionate. But on the other hand, I... And it's not ideal. Well, can I just reflect the 28 days is there so that we could scrutinise it Correct. and on many occasions get things withdrawn and relayed precisely Correct. because we have scrutinised yeah. them. Plainly, that opportunity disappears if you have two days and no meeting. Well, Stuart John. Stevenson says absolutely correct. That, of course, will be a matter for the lead committee to decide yeah. whether or yeah. not, yeah. Um, not yeah. to proceed with the instrument. OK, on that basis, I think we've agreed that we will seek more information from the government as to why it was that they really were behind... Uh, when the new instrument was laid, <coughs> pardon me, or was signed in Westminster. Uh, can I formally then, as the instrument was not laid at least 28 days before it came into force, ask the committee to agree that we draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention under report in Grand J? Yep. We do. Thank you. <coughs> pardon me. No points have been raised by our legal advisor on the Looked After Children's Scotland Amendment Regulations 2013, SSI 2013. 14. Is the committee content with that instrument, please? No. Brings us to agenda item four, which is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Bovine Viral Diarrhea Scotland Amendment Order 2013, SSI 2013 at 21. Members may wish to note that this instrument corrects a defect found in the previous order, which the committee previously reported on. Is the committee content with the instrument now, please? We are, thank you. Agenda item five, the High Hedges Scotland Bill. This is an opportunity to consider the response of Mark MacDonald, MSP, the member in charge of the bill, to the committee's stage one report on the bill. Members will have seen the briefing paper and the response from Mr MacDonald. In light of Mr MacDonald's offer to write to the committee again prior to stage two, we may consider the bill again. However, if no amendments affecting the delegated powers provisions are made to the bill at stage two, it may not be necessary for the committee to look at the bill thereafter. Members are therefore invited to make any comments they wish on the bill at this stage. Do you members <coughs> have any comments? Pleased to see that it's being brought forward <laughs> and that I am certain that Parliament will fully debate it as will committed to which this bill has been allocated and I wish it every success. Yes indeed I'm sure every constituency members be around the table is looking forward to this one. Okay well this is a problem that Stuart's never met. Okay. It's a weather issue. Right. West anyway. of Scotland is more affected than east. Uh, are, are we therefore content to note the response if necessary reconsider the bill again once receipt of uh, further correspondence from the member or indeed any amendment at, at stage two of course which will necessarily come back yeah thank you uh, agenda item six public body consent memorandum the next item of business is consideration of the public body's abolition of administrative justice and tribunals council order 2013 the united kingdom order under section one of the uk public bodies act 2011 as members will recall, the consent of the Scottish Parliament is required to make an order under Part 1 of the Public Bodies Act 2011, where such an order makes provision which would be within the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. 
The Subordinate Legislation Committee considers and reports on such orders under the same grounds as instruments laid before the Parliament. Noble formal points have been raised by our legal advisers on the order. However, the Committee may wish to draw to the attention of the League Committee that the explanatory document which accompanies the order does not explain how the statutory criteria in Section 8 of the Public Bodies Act 2011 have been satisfied in relation to the effect of the order and its application to Scotland. The League Committee may therefore wish to explore with the Scottish Government how the order and any subsequent Scottish proposals will improve the exercise of public functions in Scotland. Does the Committee agree not to formally draw the order to the attention of the Parliament, but to raise the aforementioned issue relating to the explanatory document with the League Committee? Thank you very much. I think that completes the agenda, and our next meeting will be on Tuesday the 19th of February. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.